grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. to listen for 
today when I'm preaching the sermon is that with Christ, we don't have to do anything. We don't have to prove that we are good enough. We don't have to show that we are earned our way to heaven. We don't have to be nice to people so that God will love us. But we can, we can do these things because God has loved us. So we do them because we can, not because we have to. And so when you put the noisy offering in just a minute here or so, I want you to think about as each person drops some change into the bucket, I invite you to join with us in the responsive reading. Um, we are going to read the light uh, print, and if you would respond in the bowl. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. Supplication. Supplication.
beginning with the 27th verse. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea and Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in glory of in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. will come 
and sit on the throne, rule and be loved by all. Rather, Jesus offers Peter a different picture of what it means to be God incarnate, what it means to be the Messiah. That is, one who experiences the fullness of what it means to be human. Suffering and death. When Jesus says the Son of Man must undergo suffering, he is telling Peter that he needs to experience the fullness of human pain in order to reconcile God with him. In order to bring all of creation into communion with God. It is to do this that Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of Man must suffer and die a most brutal death. Ultimately, it is to accompany us in the lowest of moments. There is no suffering, trials, or pains that we can endure in our lifetimes that God in Christ has not has not bore in his very own body. There is no human pain that is unfamiliar to God through Christ on the cross. This is a word of hope for us today. God in Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, models this accompaniment for us. God has already offered us eternal life through the death and resurrection of the Messiah, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. We are already claimed and loved and given eternal life. We don't need to do anything to earn it, keep it, and there's definitely not anything we can do to get rid of it. So then, what do we do? with such a gift like this. Let's look back at the text to help us. Jesus says that anyone who wants to come after him must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow him. Jesus continues by saying, For the one who wants to save their life will lose it, and the one who loses their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, we'll save it. Now, we read last week about some of these very disciples that Jesus is talking to, who left their families, their friends, their livelihoods to follow Jesus. Is this what this means? I can't help but think of the Matthew text that is similar to this one, where Jesus says that one must abandon their mother and their brother in order to follow him. Where the text where Jesus tells the rich man to give up all his possessions as the only way to enter the kingdom of God. Is this what Jesus is talking about? Maybe, maybe for some of us, that is how we most faithfully follow Jesus. But I would be the first to admit that if I had to give up my paycheck, leave my fiancé, friends, and family behind, I'm out. I don't think I could do it, nor do I want to. But I'm not sure that this exactly is what Jesus is saying. Jesus says these things while he's teaching about accompaniment, the accompaniment of God to humanity through Christ on the cross. And so I'd like to argue that Jesus is inviting us into such accompaniment, inviting us to deny that we are the most important thing in the world. To take up the burdens of others. 
to come alongside and love and care for those who are suffering in our midst. Jesus is inviting us into this accompaniment with others, just as he has done for us. This is what we are invited into as a response to Jesus' gift of eternal life for us. And so as we leave this place, as many of us go out and participate in God's work, our hands, as we come alongside those in need in our community, today and beyond, we are doing the work of Christ. Not because we have to, but because we can. Not because it earns us our salvation, not because it gets us bonus points with God, not even because it's the right thing to do. But because God has first accompanied us, therefore we can go and accompany others in the freedom of God.
prosper the work of creation here ministries locally and globally. That with our minds and hearts open, our hands work to lovingly care for the earth. God, we pray. Open our hands to love. For your work among the nations, we give thanks. Direct leaders in paths of honest service, that both their words and their actions are carried out on behalf of those whom they serve. God, we pray. Open our hands to love. For your work in places of need, we give thanks. Sustain all who are wearied by unemployment or lack of adequate food or housing. That we advocate for relief and just policy. Bring healing to all who are sick through the skillful hands and compassionate hearts of physicians, nurses, therapists, and caregivers. We pray especially for Terry, Rin, Andrea, Larry, Betty, Paul, Cole, Kathy, Bev, Hayden, Evelyn and Tom, Nancy and Dick, Jim and Gary. God, we pray. Open our hands to love. For your work in our neighborhoods, towns, and cities, we give thanks. Guide our common life together so that children, youth, and adults of all ages flourish. Teach us to listen attentively to our neighbors, that any new endeavors consider those who may be left out or undeserved. God, we pray. Open our eyes For your work in this worshiping community, we give thanks. Bless the service projects of this day and throughout the year. Foster deeper connections among those who serve and a spirit of accompaniment as we work alongside those in our community. Strengthen our faith that we trust God moving in and among us. God, we open our hearts We pray for the baby care kits, personal kits, school backpacks and ditty bags that will be packed and sent out to make a difference in our community. May God's love accompany the physical items and be a blessing to whoever receives them. We pray for the spaces where we will do yard work, clean up, wash windows, and clean gutters. May our work and accompaniment be a vessel for your grace and compassion for those who we serve. For your work among those who came before us, we give you thanks. We remember those who have died and are held forever in your loving hands. Hold us in your presence now and always. God, we pray. Open our hands to love. Receive these and all our prayers, gracious God. We pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give thanks for your time, talent, and financial support. Without this generosity, Zion would not be the community we are or have the ministries we do today. Let us pray. Holy God, giver of all things, receive the gifts we bring, fruit of the earth and work of the human hands, that they may be used to your purposes for life and love in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And all with you. Lift up your hearts. And you lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, 
with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, enjoying air unending.
today. Um, I have a couple of announcements about this, and if you don't have a yellow shirt and you would like to work, you're also very invited. Um, the outdoor projects have been assigned. If you have a question about that, or you need to be assigned, or something else, see me, I'm going to be in the back. The indoor projects will all go to the social hall for their assignments. Please, please come to lunch. Lunch is from 11.30 to 2.30, so even if you have to stop your project in the middle, hopefully you won't, but even if you do, please come and have lunch with us at Dunlap Park. We're having a food truck uh, room at the table. Um, in order to eat, you have to have a wristband. And so they're sitting out in the basket back there, so please put one on. And also, the captains pick up your first aid bag and your bags for leaf waste and things. Also, uh, there's water back there, so if you would like to take a, water, a bottle of water with you, feel free to. Let me know if you need anything, and if brush is ready to be picked up, uh, you can text me or call me. The captain should all have my phone number. Um, any other needs? If the project looks like, oh my goodness sakes, I need more people, and another project looks like you're done already and you can move on to a different project, please let me know about that too. Um, so again, I want to thank you. I appreciate all of you, and it will be a great time to work with the other three churches to serve people in need in our community. Thanks. I invite you to rise and body your spirit as we bless our hands to go and do this work. We are called to proclaim the good news. God is at work. This good news is not left in some history long ago or a place far away. God is at work in the world still today. In us, through us, God is glorified in our work. When we offer a helping hand, God is praised. When we share of our abundance, God is known in the world. God is at work in us. In our service today and in our daily lives, let us live out what God has called us to in baptism. God is at work in our hands. God who sets forth the law of love, Jesus who fulfills the law for you, and the Spirit through whom you are called to love, bless you this day, that you may be God's hands and heart and voice at work in this world. Amen. Go in peace. You are God's hands at work in the world. <laughs> <laughs>